This was just added this year. We have not publicly released this, but we have put this new circuitry in the probably at least a couple hundred machines now. And it's running really well. It's called hyperdrive circuitry. And so that F117 you saw before that has output that's probably a hundred times greater than any, any instrument that we've measured out there, it's now probably one to 10,000 times more energy, more impact. So if we look at a comparison chart, this is actually an old comparison chart to some other frequency instruments that are out there and you can see where we're at. We're way out here using this bulb in amplified mode, okay? But since the introduction of hyperdrive circuitry, that chart should be 64 times longer than that. Now, Dave who's running the camera here, it was his idea. He went to a, another resource and uh, he started doing research on the instrumentation that we currently had inside of our instruments. And believe it or not, that circuitry that's in many ripe instruments is a high performance automotive coil. And they've been using these for years, and so did True Rife. And what it does is it ups the voltages so that you can light these plasma tubes. But remember, it's, it's manufactured for an automobile, for race cars. That's what it is, it's for. So we put the best coil in our systems that we could find. It's, it was an MSD, high performance racing coil, with a solid core so it wouldn't leak oil all over your table. Best one we could find. I know they leak oil if you don't do that because the early models didn't have the solid cores. And I get a phone call once in a while, what's this oil on my table? Well, we, we got rid of that problem. So Dave here, he went to a, a manufacturer and they began running computer simulations to try to develop a new circuitry that was engineered for the frequency ranges in the Rife world. Not for the revolutions per minute in the racing world. So this is a whole different ball game now. And they kept sending prototypes through. And when they build these prototypes, they have to change the core material. And depending on that core will we'll determine frequency response and ranges. So the first ones we got in, it, it had tremendous ranges, just way out. But uh, a lot of heat and so noisy we couldn't run our overnight sets. But we've been doing this research, I think it went on for about nine months, and it took about six, seven prototypes to come in before we finally hit the right one. It's quiet enough, it's powerful enough, it's got the right ranges, and this is what was finally developed. We began secretly releasing this uh, in February of this year, just on, you know, to, to test it out. Some of you here may have purchased instruments prior to that, but here again, I, I, I don't want to put something in before we're ready because I don't sleep at night. Because you could have all kinds of system failures. And so we've been testing this and we're, we're very, very confident now that it's time for this release. But this is called hyperdrive circuitry. The beauty of it is, is you can take your older F-117s and you can upgrade to that circuitry. So don't feel bad if I have a two, three year old model. And uh, as a test project, we've had private conversations with about 40 or 50 people, and we put that circuitry in older models, and uh, it's running fine. But here again, the output is tremendous. Where you see the greatest change is on the high end, because we'll get into these higher frequency ranges. Those of you that own our systems know that the bulbs don't light very well once you get up to seven, eight, nine, ten thousand cycles. And there is a significant drop off in energy. But with hyperdrive circuitry, that drop-off doesn't exist, <laughs> significantly at least. When you get up to 10,000 hertz, the tube is still lit. In fact, you can go all the way up to 20,000 hertz. You could double it. And so here again, this is a tremendous, tremendous uh, jump from anything we've ever developed. Now, believe it or not, that circuitry is so powerful that uh, Dave here, our, one of our technicians and developers, uh, he found a simple way by just taking a wire cutter and cutting one little resistor out and we can push that circuitry even to more energy. 
So he brought that over for a test project because it's like driving a car at high speed so that we can see how the surrounding components will do. And uh, he turned that machine on. I don't normally get Herx effects. Within about 15, 30 seconds, I had a headache. That thing was pounding me against the wall. And if you turn that one on without the, the ball plugged in, fire comes out of the front end. <laughs> yeah. It took me about 60 seconds to tell him we will never release this model. <laughs> but he runs it on himself every day. <laughs> so if you see it kind of spinning a little bit, you know what's going on. But yeah, to sell that model, you need basically need a, you need a helmet and a fire extinguisher and a neck brace. So as far as I'm concerned, this is as far as we go on output. Because like I said, by just taking a wire cutter on one resistor, you could double it again. Uh, but we've got that resistor in there. It's like a governor. It also works with our uh, other circuitry to give us uh, the right pulses we talked about. But this is a major, major upgrade. It's tremendous. In fact, just imagine if, if somebody told you, I can, I can up the mileage of your vehicle 64 times. See, that's what you'd be looking at.